All right, well, this here is a Synology, and we're going to continue on a little bit with our backups, because that's my focus for the year, is creating backups, doing backups, where can you put backups, etc. And this is no exception. This is a Synology 2-bay. This is the DS220+. Plus. Now, this is, a, you know, a couple of generations old. They do make newer ones, but this is still works perfectly fine for me. I keep... A lot of my raw content for YouTube on it. I keep other videos, pictures, and files. I don't really keep backups on this, but I may start. I'm going to play around with that a little bit in the future. But um, my problem today is that I have run out of storage, or, or yeah, the, the, the drives have filled up and I'm gonna replace them with much larger ones, and I'm gonna show you kinda of how easy this is to do. But we're gonna go a little bit more in depth with this in later videos, so stay tuned for those. But let's just get into this and uh, see with this thing how hard it is to change out these drives. So you wanna push up, because I always forget, um, I always push down for some reason, but anyway, push up on that little tab, and this drive comes out. I do have two four terabyte drives in this currently. These are the uh, Seagate Iron Wolf Pros, and these are meant for Synologies, or for NAS's, uh, Network Attached Storage Unit, which is what this is. So I have an identical one in there, but we're gonna leave that in. So our purpose today is, again, I have about 300 gigabytes left out of the four terabytes. I have this in RAID 1, which means that's a mirror image. So you can have, uh, so I have two four terabytes, but it's only seeing one four terabyte, because what it's doing is it's copying all the data from one and putting it on the other. So whatever it does to one, it does to the other. That way it's redundant in case I have a drive that fails. There's kind of, it's not really a backup, but essentially it kind of is. It's when I have a red LED light on one of these and it's degrading, I can go ahead and pull that drive out, slap a new one in, and do a couple things in the software, and it's gonna start rebuilding. And that's kind of what we're doing here. Now, you can do that as a hot swap, so you don't even have to shut it down, but I shut it down for the purposes of kind of showing you up front, close and personal with this. And also, I'm going with a larger drive, this, these, both of these drives are actually perfectly fine. There's no degradation on them. Uh, this is not even opened, but I'm gonna show you what we're going to. And it doesn't really look any different, but it is much, much larger. And I have two of these. All right, so we're going from four terabyte to one of those guys, a 22 terabyte. And this is still an Iron Wolf Pro. These were fairly expensive. They may have come down pretty good in price. Sometimes you can even find them as a return, but they do look a little different too, right? And, um, but I didn't get these as return. These are brand new, um, but we're gonna just exchange the, this one right here. And then we're gonna go over to my computer. I'm gonna power it up. And it should look like there's a new drive in there that basically we just got to uh, repair. I, I, I'm assuming we got to repair. I've never done this, so I'm kind of kind of interested in how it's going to work. So uh, anyway, with these, there's a little. Uh, if I remember correctly, we got to pull out on those. Yep, it's just pull out and pull out right there, and then we can kind of pull it away, and the drive comes out. Set that down on the side. Now we want this to go in the same direction, just like this. There's actually, there's little nubs in there that basically they go over the screw holes. Now you can screw this down, but there's no need to with this. So we're gonna put that. Uh, oh yeah, no, you can't screw this down because these little nubs sticking off of there go into the holes here which secure it in place. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. And there we go, that's one side. And then again, looking for that. Now that's secure. Now what I can do is go ahead and put this right back in. Oh, and by the way, there's where the RAM sits, 
right there, right there in the front on the bottom. And just put this in like so. And then we can put our cover back on. It's got a little bit of dust on it, but that's okay. And there, there, there we go. Now I'm gonna go put this back on the shelf. We're gonna, I'm gonna plug this back in. There's no sense in showing you that, but then I'm gonna go over to my computer and we're gonna kind of figure that out. This does take a couple of minutes to power up, especially if you're doing this for the first time. And I apologize, we're not, you know, when, if you get this for the first time, you're gonna have to set it up, right? And I don't have a new one to set up, so I can't walk you through those steps. Maybe in the future, I'll get another new one. And that's when we will do that. But for right now, just follow the instructions on how to get it set up and then go from there. All right, I apologize for the dimness here, but you can see my Synology sitting right here. And basically the status light is supposed to be green, but it's orange. And that's probably because you see, we do have, we have our LAN status and we have our disc one and disc two. Well, the disc two is not even flashing because it probably has to be initialized. So that's why it's beeping and also why the status light is orange. So we're gonna go into the software and see if we can take care of this. All right, so now that we're in here, we can see that it is degraded or in critical state here. We're gonna click on it, and then we're gonna click on repair now right here. And we can see it's drive two, because that's the one we took out. And it says 20 terabyte. Now, don't get scared that it says 20 terabyte, even though we put a 22 in it. So you gotta realize there's like overhead that it kind of just pulls from. It's just how it's reporting it. Don't, don't be scared about that. So we're just gonna click on next. And this is just basically stating that you are not putting in a Synology drive, which is fine. And then we are going to, the estimated capacity is 3.7. And we are going to, unable to perform fast repair because the storage pool uses usage has exceeded 80%. So that's fine. We are going to continue with this and now it's just going to repair the, uh, the lost drive. So it's gonna put all the data on from the smaller drive onto the larger drive and that way we will have it at some point. So right up here in the top, we can see it says 43.8% repairing, initializing the drive. Um, so it's gotta, it's gotta initialize the drive first and then it's going to actually perform the repair. And now, I don't know if I had the camera on, but if you were quiet enough, you probably can't hear the beep anymore. And I don't know if you could before uh, while I was sitting here but there's no more beep because the drive is now initialized. And right now it says there is, it actually said over a day to repair it. Now it says six hours and eight minutes. Um, I don't know if it's gonna take that long, but there is over, you know, uh, three terabytes worth of data. It already went down to five hours and 45 minutes. So after this is done, then what you would do um, or maybe I'll just keep it on to show you and I'll continue on with the video. It just depends on how long it takes because I do have to go and do a few things. But then what I'm going to do is just basically uh, either shut it down again and put in the new one or just pull number one out and replace it. And then you're good to go. Then you got over... 20 terabytes of uh, space. So unfortunately, I'm just not going to sit around waiting for this. We're gonna end it here. If you're gonna do the second drive, just do it the same exact way I showed you for the first one and you'll be just fine. You just gotta wait until this one's done building and everything looks good as far as in the software that's provided with Synology. Now, if you're using a different one, you know, you're gonna have to do some different steps or approach it slightly differently, but the concept is still the same when it comes to NASs. But other than that, give this thing a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not and hit that bell icon next to the subscription button. That way you can get notified for any future videos that I do post. And until next time, guys, take care.